Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster, and I thought I'd do what's hopefully going to be a fairly short video for you today. Um, and I wanted to talk about the various parts of axes. Um, now, I've been talking to a few people recently, um, and it's not so much there's confusion, but I think a lot of people just don't realise what parts of the axe are called, and more importantly, what they're for. Um, now, obviously, you can use an axe in lots of different ways. Um, and what I thought I'd do is I'll bring the camera a bit closer in to start. I'll point out the various parts. Um, then I was just going to do a very quick demo of each and some of the uses of, you know, things like um, the heel of the axe. Obviously, you've got the blade, etc., etc. Um, so what I'll do, I'll move the camera a bit closer in and we'll make a start. Right then guys, so very quickly I just wanted to point out the various parts uh, or the names of the various parts of an axe. Um, so to start with everybody will be familiar with the cutting edge down here which is the blade of the axe, fairly simple, fairly self-explanatory. Um, and that's where most of your work, most of your cutting force comes from. Um, now moving on from that you have the top and the bottom point of the axe. Um, now, uh, generally they are known as the uh, point of the axe or the toe of the axe up at the top where you've got this pointy bit um, and down the bottom you've got what's known as the heel. Um, both of them have their uses and I'll do a quick demo in a second to show you what can be done with those. Um, the flat edge here is known as the face of the axe and on the back you've got what's known as either the hammer or more commonly the pole. Um, now depending on what type of axe you have, don't be mistaken by the fact that this is called a hammer. A lot of axes, especially carving axes and, and quite a lot of bushcraft axes as well, um, this is not heat treated to be able to withstand hammering. Um, now to be honest, the way I tend to use it, if I'm out in the woods, if I've made some wooden wedges, I will quite happily um, sort of hit them in with the back of my axe on the, with the pole. Um, but certainly don't ever try and use it for hammering in metal wedges, nails, anything that's particularly hard because what will happen is this could very easily splinter um, and you can have sharp pieces of metal come flying off. Um, so those are the basic parts of the, I mean, this particular axe where you have this little sweeping section under here, that's known as a beard. Um, not all axes have these, um, carving axes not all of them but quite a lot tend to because it means you can get your hand right in and choke up with them which gives you a lot more fine control. Um, so anyway I'm just going to move the camera around for a second and I'll just give you a quick demo of what you can do with various parts of the axe. Right then guys, so I've just got a little piece of off cut here um, and also the eucalyptus bowl we've been working on recently because it's quite a nice uh, sort of complex shape to show you a few things. So to start with, and, and again I, you know, I'm just using my Hans Carlson Sloyd axe because it was the one I had to hand. This really does relate to pretty much any axe, um, certainly within carving and bushcraft. Um, so to start with we're going to have a look at the blade of the axe, um, you know, probably the most common um, and the most used part part of the axe um, and I say it's, it's really where you get your power from for sort of you know chopping cuts that kind of thing um, and really you know using it either with just the weight of the head or with some arm strength as well You know, we, we, you know it's, I'm, I'm kind of teaching people to suck eggs a little bit here, but you know, that's kind of what the blade is for. Um, and in combination with a little bit of the face of the axe, what you can do is make a cut and twist the axe to sort of lever out some of that material. And that levering action really does help when you're chopping. I mean, maybe not so much on this piece of wood, but you know, if you're trying to sort of cut down a blank for something, um, you know, or even just in general bushcraft work, it's a really good technique to sort of get used to early on, um, and it really does help with sort of splitting off and taking down that kind of material. So moving on then to the toe of the axe, pointy bit on the top. Um, for me personally, I mean, there's various uses for it, but I really like it for fine control. Um, so for things like, um, let's have a look. So you've got this line down here. Um, hopefully you can see that on the camera all right, where I've got a bit of a sharp corner. Now I don't want to remove too much of this because I actually want to keep it as it is. But essentially you can use that toe 
and choke up really far on the axe heads. It's almost so you're touching the uh, the metal of the axe. And you can use that for really quite fine work. And again, you know, in things like curves and corners, it really lets you get in there and control what it is you're doing. Um, I mean, you can also use it like the tip of a knife if you don't have a knife to hand. Uh, let's have a look. Where's a piece I don't mind losing? There you go. So you can actually use it, you know, for not so much, well, maybe maybe hollowing, I suppose, is a word. But, you know, you can use it to sort of cut things in and remove fairly small pieces of wood. Just get rid of that. Um, and again, likewise, when you're coming for a, a carving like this, so I have, I, I want to cut away this element here, for example, and I would use probably the top half of the axe. You know, nice and controlled, choking right up, and I'm using the blade for most of this. However, if I turn around to this side, and I want to do the same down here, if I try and use this, I tend to find that the back edge, the bottom edge of the axe, sort of binds up and gets in the way of what I'm doing. And this is this is really where sort of the uh, heel of the axe and, and the bottom portion of the blade comes in. Because what I can do is actually come down here and just start removing this and no other part of the axe and the blade is getting in my way. So if I'm trying to do this, come down here, I'm kind of coming into contact here with bits I maybe don't want to cut. Um, so again, by using the heel, I'm taking away all of that blade that I really don't want um, you know, to, to get in the way. Um, and again, you know, you, quite often you'll see me on this channel choking right up or, or sort of having the axe maybe about here while I'm doing my work. There's absolutely no reason why you can't, uh, let me go back to that other piece of wood actually, there's no reason why you can't go right to the bottom of the handle and give yourself a bit more leverage, a bit more power. And I usually find that works really well at the beginning of a project when you're trying to get rid of a lot of waste wood. But actually for me, my sort of fairly standard approach to using an axe now is actually coming up here. Just because I find the closer you get to the axe head, the more control you get. Right then guys, well I hope that was useful. Um, as I say, it was just meant to be a really quick video just to talk a little bit about different ways in which you can use your ax. You know, you, not everything is just a hacking motion. And I think people that uh, you know are familiar with axes and do a lot of carving will know this already. But for people who are just getting into it or fairly new to it, you know, you don't have to use the axe in the same way every time. It's a really, really versatile tool. Um, and you know, I, I really encourage you to kind of learn um, not so much its limitations, but you know exactly what you can do with it and that you can you know, come at things from a slightly different angle by using different parts of the blade, especially when you're working on something like a bowl that's got lots of curves and turns and things like that. And even when it comes to smaller things like spoons, you know, sometimes you'll sort of turn the spoon round and all of a sudden you realize that the way in which you've been cutting with the ax isn't gonna work on that particular um, facet or whatever it may be of that spoon and you need to sort of just rethink a little bit um, and that's where using things like the heel or the toe and those kind of things come into it. So anyway guys, like I say, I hope it was useful. Um, any comments or questions in the box below, hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.